Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Are you experiencing buffering on your Amazon Fire Stick? Well, you're not alone. There are thousands and thousands of people across the world that are experiencing the same thing. There is a fix. Today's video, we're gonna talk about that. There are really only three reasons why your Fire Stick is buffering. So we're gonna cover all three of those in today's video right now. All right, let's get started here. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is find out what is causing the buffering issue for you. So what I recommend doing first and foremost before you do anything else is go onto your Fire Stick here, your Amazon Fire Stick, do a speed test. Now, I've done videos on how to access the speed test on my channel. If you haven't seen those, definitely check out those videos. They'll really help you out. But if you haven't, all you need to do really is just go up to the search engine on your Fire device and type in speed test. Download one of the speed testers. Really doesn't matter which one you use. Analyti is the most accurate, okay? That's the first thing you're gonna wanna do. Now, when you download that speed tester and you run a speed test on your network, you're going to get a speed number. Now, you're gonna be looking for the download speed, not the upload speed, unless you're uploading to something like YouTube. But streaming is a download process. So, you're gonna look for the download speed, okay? Now, you want that to be at least 50 megabits per second. If you're not getting 50, this right here portion of this video is gonna be very helpful for you. So, if you're not getting at least 50 on your Fire Stick, there are two reasons why you might not be getting that speed. First one would be you're not paying for fast enough speed. So let's talk about that really quick. So your internet provider provides you options for speed. Now in your area, you may not have the faster speeds, but you can certainly get a streaming speed, which is going to be at least 200. And the reason why I say you need at least 200 is because when you go from a hard network to a wireless environment, say Wi-Fi, for example, you, you connect it through your phone Fire Stick, you're going to diminish about half the speed automatically. So if you have 200, you're down to 100 megabits per second automatically just by going wireless instead of Ethernet connected. Secondly, then you're going to add a VPN. Now you're going to cut that in half as well. So you're going to go from 200 to 100, 100 to 50. So now you're at that threshold where you need to be at at least 50 megabits per, per second. Now, I hope that kind of gave you a little illustration. So you basically, you want to get at least the 200 megabit per second speed on your internet provider. This is the number one reason why people buffer out there around the world when you're using a streaming device like a Fire Stick is you think you pay for 50, you get 50, but you don't. You get half that when you go wireless. And then potentially if you have maybe a poor router, you're gonna get even less than that. The one they give you is usually not a good one. Now I have other videos on good routers that will increase your speed. But one thing that a lot of people don't realize is your location in comparison to your router. So this goes with your service as well. So let's just say for example, your Fire Stick is in a basement. So my Fire Stick is in an office, which is in a basement. So we're, I'm really far from the router. This right here is the only reason I'm able to stream in that. Now what this is, is called a range extender. These are Wi-Fi boosters. What it does is it takes the signal from your router, it extends it to further rooms. What a lot of people may not realize that if you are far from your router, that speed diminishes the further that you get to the point where you almost can't get a signal. What this will do right here is this will take that signal, it will boost it so you don't lose that speed so this is this is important it's vital I can't do anything any of my videos without one of these because it keeps the speed up now this is the rock space one here I have the 2100 and before they had the 2100 they had the 1200 you can see this difference the intended difference basically this is going to be a longer range and faster speeds so you can decide which one you want I'll put a link in the description where I got these ones here they're fantastic and I've done other videos on these but the number one reason that you, most people buffer is just because of their service it has nothing to do with the fire stick itself or the service that they're using it's simply what they have at their location and it, it may be all you have unfortunately it is what it is but if you can upgrade your speed with your internet provider or get one of these range extenders uh, it would be vitally important so run that speed tester first find out what your speed is if you're at least 50 we can go on to the next step here because I've got three reasons why you're going to buffer okay so again if it's below 50, you might wanna consider calling your company or if you're far from your router, adding one of these. Now let's talk about the number two reason why most people buffer. And the number two reason why most people buffer with an Amazon Fire Stick is the source. So what do I mean by source? 
basically where are you getting your streams? Are you getting it from an IPTV, a paid one or a free one? Are you getting it from a, a, a movie app like Cinema HD or Cyberflix or Morpheus, something like that? that stream, that source, that server that you're grabbing that information and bringing it to your fire stick is a reason why a lot of people buffer. So if you did step one and you were above 50 megabits per second, this might be the reason why. So if you're using an app, I'll just use example of Cinema HD. And if you don't know what that is, it's a great app. Reach out to me, I'll be happy to help you get something like that. It gets you all kinds of movies and things like that. But when you're using an app like that, you're basically taking a signal from a remote server and bringing it to yourself. So if their servers are slow, or that stream that you selected is just not working great, it's their fault, not yours, if your speed is enough. So really look at the source that you use. I try to pick services or sources or places that I recommend on my channel or my Patreon channel. If you don't know what that is, check it out. It gives you all kinds of great information where you can get movies, TV, sports, all kinds of stuff completely free on your Amazon Fire Stick or, or streaming devices like Android boxes. Check it out. It helps support our channel. I really do appreciate that. So Patreon is an option for you to get a lot of great information like I'm sharing here quicker with additional support. But the Fire Stick here is a great device, but if you are pulling a bad source from somewhere, there's nothing that your Fire Stick can do. There's nothing that your internet provider can do. It's the source's fault. So for example, for me, I use Cinema HD a lot, and when I click on something and it buffers, all I do is back out, pick a stream lower down on the list, and try it. If it buffers again, I pick a stream lower down on the list and I pick that one. And the reason why I do all that is because I know my speed, because of the range extender and the router that I'm using, I have enough speeds that it should work without buffering. You can always find a stream for a TV show or a movie that does not buffer if all three of these steps are met. You have good equipment with good speed, you have a fire stick that is optimally performed, and then if you just pick a good stream, you're gonna get it. So source really is the number two reason. I don't need to get into that anymore because I wanna to get to number three, the most important in my opinion, because the other stuff can be fixed by other people. This can be fixed by you. So the number so the number three reason and the most important reason in my opinion, because this is something that you can do right now without having to purchase anything, without having to call anybody to get a faster service or a faster router. All you need to do is change your settings on your Fire Stick and make sure that it is clean. And what do I mean by clean? What I mean by clean is you don't have a lot of apps running in your background. Think of it like this. A processor on an Amazon Fire Stick is very small and it's not very powerful compared to Android boxes or other devices I've reviewed but it is a great, great streaming device. So if you have a Fire Stick or considering having a Fire Stick, you definitely want to pay attention to this part because I'm, I'm not only gonna tell you about it really quick, but I'm gonna show you on the TV what I mean by this. You wanna make sure that all of your apps are closed after you're done using them. A lot of people don't realize it, but when you're done using an app and you go back to the home screen and go to a different app, it doesn't close the old app. Turning it off, unpowering it, putting it to sleep, unplugging it from the wall, none of that closes those background apps, okay? So I'm gonna share with you in this video how to close those background apps. There's also some settings that you're going to want to change on here so that you're not using up those limited resources that you have on a small processor like this that can't handle 50, 60, 70 programs. And I would be willing to bet somebody out there watching runs this program that I'm gonna have you run in just a few moments and is running at least 30 or 40 apps all at once on a tiny little processor on here. It just can't handle it and that's gonna cause some buffering. It's gonna cause some problems moving around the screen as well, pretty much rendering this Fire Stick useless. And I know there's a lot of people that are very frustrated with their Fire Stick for this very reason. So right now, I'm gonna get on the TV and I'm gonna go over this with you and I'm gonna share with you where you can get a program that will close those background apps and change the settings that are causing a lot of resource buffering, okay? So we're gonna do that right now. Let's get in on the TV. All right, so I am in front of the TV now, as you can see. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over two ways that you can make sure that your Fire Stick is running optimally from a software perspective. Very easy to do. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna find out what is running in the background. All you need to do is get a program called Background Apps and Processes, okay? So that's gonna be found in the Find section under Search. 
if you have the old interface, all you need to do is go to the very top, go to the left hand corner, there is a magnifying glass. Click that, that's your search. You're gonna find it the exact same way, okay? Or again, if you have the new interface, it's located right here, old one, upper left hand corner. So let's go ahead and find it. Go to your search right here. And then you can just either type it in or you can just use your voice and say, background apps and processes. And that's just the easiest way to do it. So there it is right there. This is what you are looking for. So this is going to analyze your system and it's going to find out how many apps you have running in the background. You'd be surprised how many you have. I keep mine pretty clear, but let's go ahead and open it up. And let's see what I have going. All right, so you're just gonna wanna download it. I already own it, but I don't have it downloaded on this Fire Stick. I went ahead and removed it just so you could see the process. So we're gonna go ahead and download it. Now it is installing and we're gonna go ahead and open it up. Let's analyze our system right now and see what is running. All right, we're gonna go ahead and say, got it. So this is what's running in the background right now. So what I did so you could see what you might encounter, I opened a bunch of programs before this video just so that I had them all up and running. As you can see, all these were running on my device at the same time. Time. That, what do you think that's going to do to a little processor that the Fire Stick has? I mean, the stick's only this big. How big can the processor be? It's not very fast and it's not very productive when you have this many things running in the background. So I've got, I mean, there's just so much on here. And, and this is a demo stick, so I do run a lot, but I just opened a whole bunch of stuff so you could see what yours might look like. You might have... 50 or 60. I, I'm curious what you have running. Comment down below in the comment section of this video. Let me know how many you had running. I'm just curious who had the most. Um, I ran a video on this not too long ago. And one person said they had 60 apps running in the background. I don't even know how they're even using their Fire Stick. Now this one ha was running slow as I prepared for this demo and I said I bet you I have at least 20 running and so sure enough 24 running in the background. So how do you close them? All you need to do is just go up here to close all apps just like this. And what it's going to do is it's basically a shortcut to get you right to where you close it. So you're going to go down here to force stop. That's really what you want to do. Now, once you've clicked force stop, you hit the back button on your remote one time, goes to the next app, force stop, back button. I'm going to keep this one running. I always have my ExpressVPN running. So I'm going to just hit the back button and then I'm going to go ahead and force stop. Keep going. Just like all these back button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Force stop. And you do have to do them individually. There are apps out there that will do it all at once for you, but for whatever reason, it doesn't always work. It doesn't really close background apps, I've noticed. So, oops, I don't wanna do that. Just keep doing each of these, just force stop them all. And you're gonna see a huge improvement performance when you've done this. And you should do this every day or every other day at least, especially if you're running a lot of apps. If you're only running one or two, it's not a big deal. Probably not your reason for buffering, but if you are running a lot of apps, a lot of different apps, this could be a reason why you are buffering. So I'm just gonna go through them and show you kind of how to do it. Uh, so I'm force stopping all of these. Let me see if I missed any of them. Yeah, I missed a few. So you just continue on and you can just keep closing them that way. Again, go to the top, close all apps, go through each one and close them all down. Keep the ones you want. Obviously you need to have your VPN running at all times when you are streaming. I use ExpressVPN. I'll put a link in the description where you can get three free months of ExpressVPN if that's something you want to do, but it's the fastest VPN out there. So if you're a streamer, that's the only one to get. I can't imagine using any of the other ones. Um, but that's what you do for closing those background apps. That's probably one of the main reasons why a lot of people have hardware buffering on their device. If you have the speed uh, for your internet and you do have a good signal, you're pretty close to your router and your source is good, and you know your source is good because you use it on other devices in your house, you don't have any buffering issues, then this is probably the reason why. Now the second reason why some people have hardware buffering is because of stuff running in the background that aren't your apps. And let me just give you an example. Hit home on your remote control. You're gonna go over here to your settings in the far right hand corner right there. Now you're gonna go up here to your preferences. Okay, so go to preferences. So you're going to go featured content and you're going to make sure these are both off. Allow video autoplay and audio autoplay. What that means is when you go to your home screen right here, this will start a video on your device. Now, if you have some programs running in the background, maybe a stronger program like Kodi, something that takes up a lot of resources, something like this video playing in the background 
will actually cause a whole lot of problems for you. So you want to turn that off. And that's really the setting. There's a few other things for data mining and stuff, but the real big setting is that featured content section right there that I just shared with you. So clear those background apps, make sure that your featured content is off. You don't need to have the audio or the video for that because that just takes up hardware resources that you might need. So I've covered all three of those reasons why number one, your internet provider or your location of your fire stick. Both can be fixed, one phone call or purchasing a Wi-Fi extender. The second reason is your source. So what source are you getting your information from? Where are you getting your apps from? Where are you getting your movies from? Whatever content that you're getting, where are you getting it? If you have an IPTV, it's probably, it could very well be their issue not your issue if your speed is good. And the number three way is this. So what I recommend doing is doing the speed tester on your Fire Stick. If your speed is slow, call your internet provider, see if you can get a faster one, or if you're far from your router, simply get an extender like the one I shared in the beginning of the video. And then skip number two, go to this one here and just kind of play with your Fire Stick. Make sure you have all your background apps closed and everything. Now, if you've done both of those things, and they're both good, your speed's good, your Fire Stick is clean, and you're still buffering, I can almost guarantee it's the source. It's one of those three things. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please do me a favor. Just comment down below. Please do that, because that gives me an idea of what I'm doing right or wrong in my videos. I appreciate all my subscribers out there the past few years. And again, if there's anything I can do to help you out, reach out to us on Patreon. I'll be happy to answer your questions, do private videos, all of that stuff on my Patreon channel. Gives you a direct connection right to me. If you're having any issues, it really can be an invaluable resource. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks everybody, bye.